welcome to Let's Play Dark Souls. We're on part 28. I'm here by Andre. Um, the next part we're going to be going to is the catacombs. But um, before we do that, I want to uh, prepare a special weapon for the catacombs. And I'll explain more once we get there. It won't be easy, but I'm afraid you'll have to look for someone else. So he's actually talking about the embers that we found in Lost Isolith. And uh, funnily enough, we should be getting to the blacksmith that will be taken to those soon. Um, in the meantime, though, I want to purchase an item. I want to see if I can get... I don't know if he sells a mace. Um, he does not. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, this could be a good... I might be pushing it. Um, Alright, in that case, we're just going to upgrade a random one. So, I, I want to make a holy weapon, by the way. That's what the, what the plan here is. The, that being the first ember we found ever from the Moonlight Butterfly. So, I'm going to go to my bottomless box here, and I'm going to just grab a random weapon. And I think I'm going to use the, uh, the Morning Star, which is right here. So, we'll take that. Um, the Occult Club might actually work, because... Um, Basically, uh, to sort of explain why, um, holy weapons, they uh, they have a special side of bonus effect, which is going to be very relevant in the upcoming area. Um, pretty much skeleton enemies, when you knock them apart, they'll, their bones will like shatter and they'll fall apart on the ground, but then they'll resurrect back together. Um, and some skeletons, you only have to kill them a few times and then they're dead forever, but uh, some weapons... I mean, uh, some, not weapons, but that, the bison type night shards. Uh, some skeletons, once you get deeper into the catacombs, they're actually being controlled by uh, necromancers, who are going to be these wrinkly old zombie looking guys. And basically, they will always respawn until you kill the necromancer. Or, if you use a holy weapon... Um, ooh, I don't have enough souls. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so yeah, that's why we're making this here. Um, it'll make things a little simpler and it's a cool thing to showcase because the whole area is sort of designed around um, running past the skeletons to get to the necromancers because uh, no matter how much you keep fighting the skeletons, they keep coming back and coming back. So uh, it, it's definitely fun, but when you can when you can do it the way we're going to do it, we're going to be able to just steadily approach it on our own terms. It'll be a much better time. So, the way this works is uh, when you make specialty weapons, you want to get them up to plus five. And um, I'm not sure if I've ever actually done this. But instead of doing reinforce, and we could have done that on our own at our bonfire, but for the blacks, you need the blacksmith to do this part, which is when you modify it. So you can take any plus five weapon and you can modify it depending on the embers you have. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to want to make a divine. You could also make a raw or a just continue down plus six. So we're gonna go for divine. And now if we go back to reinforce weapon, we can now use our green type knight shards to get this up to divine plus five. So yeah, I hope uh, that makes sense how that works there. Um, you know, plus five being just like the baseline. And now when it's divine, now it's divine plus five, which is separate. So with all that, now we got ourselves a good weapon. Neither of us. Um, yeah, now it's not going to be like compared to our Black Knight sword, it's actually going to look much worse um, in most aspects. It does a little bit of magic damage too. Um, but it should be a blunt tip. It says physical. I'm not sure if. Where does it actually say that? Weapon type, tech type strike. Which I think is. Yeah, strike is basically blunt damage. Right. If I remember right. <laughs> Now, this weapon is also the one that Petrus of Thorolin was using. Um, and, but it's like pretty standard. Um, similar to the Halberd, if you uh, if you swing and you don't actually hit anything, your guy will sort of lose his balance. Um, but yeah. I think this will suit us nicely with our dragon shield and dragon face. <clears throat> see if we can actually uh, use that at some point. Uh, burn a skeleton or... I think I'll... Let's try it right here, actually. 
Oh, yeah. Got one of them. Oh, alright. But yeah, this thing is, uh... This is gonna do decent work for us. We have been leveling up our faith. So, we're actually gonna have some scaling with it, which is nice. But, uh, yeah, we're definitely... The Black Knight Sword <laughs> is still our best weapon by far. So, yeah. As far as where we gotta go, um... We're gonna be heading down into the graveyard, which, uh... We haven't been there since the very beginning of the game. When we were first just getting set up. And, um... It's not too far, so I figured we'd walk. Um, could have teleported. Now, I am going to rest at the Firelink Bonfire. Just in case we die. Um, there's... There's some trickiness in the upcoming area. And oh, okay, here's another thing um, that you have to sort of get by chance, but just a little Easter egg. Sometimes Fram will be asleep, and no matter how much you talk to him, he's gonna just stay asleep. And what you have to do is actually smack him. No, no, I'm fine. And then he'll wake up. Well, and wide awake. Do not treat me like an old withering snake. Yeah, so he gets a little grumpy, but you know, he's the one that was sleeping, so. Just a fun little thing. Uh, now, it, talking to him now will just be like talking normal. But uh, yeah, we are uh, we're a few minutes in and we're not even in the graveyard, so let's uh, get a move on here. If we go this way, the uh, proper way into the graveyard is through here, in this direction. And down these stairs. And so here are our first skeletons, and you're gonna notice that yeah, blunt damage does very good against them. And down they go. So continuing on, we can skip the big graves so we don't have to fight the big skeletons. But yeah, this uh, this beginning part is gonna be pretty trivial. Um, once we get deeper into the graveyard, it'll get a little bit more complicated. Alright, let's get our last good view of the outside, and down we go. Now, I think this is now unknown territory that we're making our way down into. And yeah, the atmosphere changes right away, as you can see. And yeah, now with that we are officially in the catacombs. Oh, yeah, so our first new enemy <laughs> are those exploding heads there. Um, you'll notice they're just... Oh, yeah, raise your shield. You can definitely block the attack, but it will knock you. And depending on where exactly you are, it could throw you way off. Um, I don't know if those ones respawn. Oh, sometimes the heads do just keep respawning. And you can actually smack them while they're on the ground. So uh, keep that in mind. Yeah. Down here we're gonna find a big pile of bones. And with bones come skeletons, of course. Now, oh yeah, these are officially the first uh, necromancer skeletons. So if you come down here without a holy weapon, and you could like, you'll just be here all day fighting these guys. Because uh, instead of getting the souls, when they, you, you'll still, still hear that death sound, and this will happen. But in a few seconds, they'll come back together and, and, uh, come back at you. <laughs> now, the, uh, okay, there some more skeletons here. Now, the necromancer is going to be up ahead, and then we can, uh, see what this guy looks like. Alright. Very spooky atmosphere, too. As you can see, there's, like, that guy, like, clutching the statue. Uh, here's the door, which we can't open directly. We're going to have to go find the switch somewhere. And the switch is right here, of course. Now, okay, here's our buddy. Yeah, uh, they, they'll shoot fireballs at you, so be careful. But otherwise, they go down pretty easily. They rely on their hordes of skeletons to defend them. Uh, we also get a bonfire here, which is very nice. And rest there, and there we go. Uh, let's push this open. So, now, the catacombs is a pretty cool area. Uh, we're coming here fairly late, of course. But um, the cool thing is, you can come here right out the gate and quickly grab some cool items or cool weapons and stuff like that. And ooh, this guy's... Oh, I did reset the bonfire. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, it doesn't kill them permanently, permanently. It only kills them uh, until you reset the bonfire. 
but uh, yeah. We're coming here late game, so this beginning part will be pretty easy. Now the catacombs, um, it is exactly what it is. Is um, you know, as it says, it's uh, just like in real life. The catacombs are just like these underground, large-scale tombs. And, well, yeah, that guy's gonna be there shooting fireballs at us. Annoying. And ooh, there's an item there. Okay, good. It's weird. It's not letting me pick up. Probably because I'm in danger. Skeletons, uh, that rolling attack is especially funny. Can you not? Well, <laughs> you can shoot them faster than I can heal. Alright, no problem. We're gonna be dealing with him soon enough. Uh, now this little chase sequence here can be fun, uh, cause normally he just keeps running past the skeletons and when you when they keep uh, respawning, it becomes especially chaotic. So normally I would recommend just rushing him down, but we'll take our time. We'll play into his trap. You hear those heads exploding in the distance? Oh yeah, be careful too, because uh, when they had their sword up like that, he should have parried me there. <laughs> and then he will get the repost as well. Which can be especially... Uh, if you think it's annoying to get parried by an online troll, uh -huh. Or invader. Uh, it's especially feels annoying when you get parried by the NPC. Okay, Can't go up there yet? Um, oh yes, right here. By the way, this is an item that's worth sort of uh, coming here early to get. Let me just take care of these guys. Uh, yeah, this Lucerne here. This is a cool weapon. It's a uh, it's a halberd type weapon, but instead of being like an axe at the end, it's kind of like a spear kind of. Um, and not exactly like a spear, it's more like a sideways spear. Um, here, let, me, let me just put it on. <laughs> Make a little more sense there. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, it's a... Uh, I don't know, maybe like a pickaxe would make more sense, but... The attacks, uh, you still swing it like a halberd, but its damage type is piercing, so you can actually get counter hits with it, and um, you know, all the other small intricacies of the damage type. It's like, you know, if you're just playing and you just want to use a weapon, um, they're all just, they're all the same idea, you know, you smack the enemy and they take damage, but, um, you know, if you want to really fine-tune what you're doing and you're trying to make something cool, the Lucerne is a very great weapon, because when it comes to stabbing weapons, it's actually very powerful. Um, I've heard that, like, if you really start to min-max with it, like, put on the Leo ring and the red tearstone ring, um, which is a ring we haven't seen yet, but do that and power within, and you can start to get some really crazy numbers. Okay, um, I think this is the end of the line for him, so let's take out the master here. And try not to take... Whoa, point blank. Ah, point blank arrows. Okay, he's just gonna get the heck out of here. Which is kind of annoying for us, because the way forward is not down back that way. So I might just ignore the archer entirely. There's really no need to go back. Although, I hope he doesn't have a view of us. I don't think he will. So over here, I don't think there's an, is this where we came from? This might have been where we came from. <laughs> the catacombs can get very disorienting, um, just a heads up. So uh, we want to cross that bridge, but we can't. So we're going to have to do a charge through the heads here. Oh no, that could have been bad. <laughs> we got caught. Okay. Oh no, I got, oh, yeah, I'm still alive, I'm still alive. Okay, so that was Blood Boss. Um, I don't know if that's ever happened to us yet, but their scimitars do that, inflict bleeding. So uh, yeah, Blood Loss, the way that exactly works, just as a reminder, is you it builds up with each attack, kind of like poison. And then when, when it fills up, instead of getting poisoned, you get Blood Loss, which just means you lose a big chunk of health. So it's uh, kind of annoying, but uh, not too bad. So right here, let's pay attention, because here we can see a bonfire is hinted towards us. Over there is another switch for us to try to get to. Um, plus the item was there. Uh, catacombs, this is actually a great example. If you remember a few episodes ago, I was trying to think of a, uh, an area that had good, like tight level design when I was talking about how bad Lost Eyes <laughs> this design is. Uh, the catacombs is actually amazing level design in terms of how everything just sort of loops back together and like is very elegant, almost like a puzzle box. There's a lot going on in a small 
certain amount of area. Um, not that this is a small area, but I guess the density of the whole thing is good. <laughs> I don't know, I'm trying to think of words. Um, oh yes, yeah, so these are the guys that I got hit by the head, but since uh, my holy weapon didn't kill them, they actually were able to respawn. Oh yeah, watch out for those. By the way, oh, half the statues in this level will do that. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. This whole place. I don't know who is um, setting up all these traps. Or actually, okay. Good idea of who it is. Um, but we'll talk about that when we get there. There's actually two suspects. Surprisingly enough. Um, and we'll be meeting them soon enough. Alright, so they're out of the way. Another cool fun fact about this place um, and why it's so cool is that you can actually... There's a lot of crazy shortcuts you can take. Um, like, if you look down, like, we could jump down to that ledge right there. Um, actually, looks like that's a spike bridge, so probably don't want to do that just yet. But there's still a lot of areas where we can jump down. Uh, we're going to take the uh, the orthodox path here. But, yeah, in terms of, like, uh, like I said, you come here early, and then you can just go to a bunch of areas. Uh, there's a lot of, like, just cool loot you can grab. Because, you know, early on, you remember how, like, for when you first land in Morgen, you know, spend your souls and then just run around and grab things and die. Um, that philosophy works best here. <laughs> There's so many weapons like the Lucerne, and you just run in, skeletons be damned, and just grab what you can. Uh, now be careful too, because they do... Yeah, okay, I was about to say, <laughs> that one didn't look like it, but yeah. They'll put the spike traps, especially on the ones with weapons. I mean, with items. Yeah, the, uh, our mace is making this a much easier time. Because, uh, keep in mind, too, pretty much all the skeletons here are linked to a necromancer somewhere. And, um, even if he's not nearby, they'll keep respawning. And oftentimes you'll just be in a room, and you just gotta... <laughs> you just gotta press on. Now, oh yeah, the nice thing about this, the uh, necromancers is that they are mini-boss types, which means once you take them out, he's gone forever. So that's, uh, if, if nothing else, if you're trying to make progress and you're having a tough time here, just prioritize the necromancers, because that'll eventually open the area up for you. Um, and I believe, okay, this should open on the other side uh, once we get there. Now, wait, was there anything else in here? There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of one-way drops, by the way, um, in that other room we were in just before upstairs. If I had stepped on one of, like, the graves, it would have dropped us down. The problem, though, is that then you can't go back up, so I'm kind of trying to just go not the one-way paths first okay now this is a problem because we are hitting against the wall here oh and then down he goes down they both go yep and they died <laughs> yeah once you get the souls then they're dead for good uh okay, i think we can walk here yeah uh, ooh. Um, oh, yeah, that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> huh. Alright, and I'll be able to get something there and drop back down. So anyway, yeah, this opens this door. Which takes us... We don't want to go that way. We want to go this way. And here we are, okay. We're making progress. Um, so here's the spike bridge, which we can't cross yet, of course. Over this way. Uh, if you come here early, up here you're going to find a certain character, uh, who is one of the main suspects for the uh, traps here. Uh, we'll actually be seeing him in the next area, because uh, if you come here later, I don't know exactly what the tipping point is. I think it's if you ring the both bells of awakening. Uh, not entirely sure, but either way, that will uh, flip the bridge and everything will be fine. Uh, but anyway, right here, and it might be hard to tell, but um, around over there-ish is where we were before. But, okay, we got a bit of a walk, actually. Right here is that bonfire that we got, uh, we were able to see from when, we, when we grabbed the item. And uh, usually when they try to hint things like that, if you keep your sense of direction, you can figure those things out. 
Um, this one's a little tricky though, because um, you know I'm already disoriented from where that was. <laughs> but keep in mind, from the bridge with the spikes and the uh, switch, here's the bonfire. And uh, yeah, with that, um, I think this will be a good sort of halfway point. Let's, um, let's go on a bit though, because actually, let's, uh, let's grab one more thing before we call it a day. Uh, if we go this way, and right there is uh, where we want to do like a little leap of faith. We'll continue on there next time, but for now, let's, uh, let's try to make this jump. Okay, this is one that's worth rushing towards, by the way. Right here is the great side, and this is one of the better weapons in the game, you could say. Um, and yeah, we are very, very disoriented. Um, I think even one of these will drop down. Or no. Oh, yep, right there. Okay. And that takes us somewhere. Okay. Well, <laughs> I've gone and messed up the whole order. Um, either way, I think right here will be good to stop. So uh, we'll pick up next time right off right here. Guys, thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate the watches. I hope I'm managing to keep you entertained as I ramble and babble on as I get lost and try to find my way through levels. And oh god, here comes tides. Let's uh, actually hide in here. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.